the, uh, the first thing I want to show, again, is uh, really about setting CPC bids. And this is the first page bridger. So this is one of our two basic CPC bid management tools. The first page bridger has as its goal to allow you to find keywords that are very close to the first page bid and that have a decent enough quality score that it may actually make sense to just raise your bid to take advantage of all of the additional impressions that may be available by showing up on page one as opposed to page two. So once you load this up, you'll see a list of keywords and you'll notice that the current bid has to be within 20% of the first page bid level and the quality score has to be better than a five. That's in our aggressive mode. But we can also change this so you can go into a more conservative mode and here we look for even higher quality score keywords. So those fives are gone and now we look for a seven and up. If you wanted to tweak this even further, so say that you have a big account and you have tons and tons of keywords close to the, uh, the first page bid, you can always open up your custom filters and you can tell us what is it uh, that you're looking for in terms of a minimum quality score or in terms of some of the other uh, current settings. Now, when we launched this tool, and this tool is, is relatively old, it's uh, one of our first ones. So people asked us, why don't you show us conversion data on this page? And it's a good question, but really what we're trying to do here is give you more impressions. So um, in that context, it doesn't really matter too much whether these keywords have conversions or not. So that's why we decided not to put it on this page. However, in certain situations, it does make sense. So when that is the case, you can come into the advanced mode and toggle that on. And now you see that there's a column picker. In this column picker, we can turn on columns like conversions, conversion value, etc. And then, of course, once we've turned those on, if we go to the filters, you can see we have a whole lot of additional filters available to you now. But as part of this advanced mode, we really have two new methodologies that we can uh, offer to you. So one of them is restoring to the first page and promoting to the first page. And what this means is restoring to the first page is for those keywords that have a somewhat decent average position, which indicates to us that these keywords probably do get some action on the first page of results, even though they are below the first page bid estimate that Google sets. So for those keywords, you might want to look at uh, what is the conversion uh, how many conversions have you gotten? Because if you uh, spend a lot of money on them on the first page and you don't get any conversions, maybe they were bid down to the second page for a good reason. Now, this other method methodology, promote to the first page, this is about finding keywords that have a little bit of a lower average position currently, so where we think these keywords have not had a tremendous uh, amount of chance to prove themselves on the first page of results. So here, the conversions are probably a little bit less relevant, and it's really more about boosting these keywords to the first page to get some impressions, to get some clicks, and then we can start making decisions based on conversion data. So, uh, so those are some of the ways that you can use this particular tool. Now, as far as the bids, on our previous session, somebody pointed out that the new bid is significantly higher than the first page bid, and that's uh, up to you to decide. So you can say the first page bid, that's what we're gonna bid, plus no additional percent, then you're gonna set exactly the, the first page bid as your new bid, but you can also increase or decrease this depending on what makes you feel the most comfortable. So that's how that tool works. So I'm going to move on to the next one, which is the conversion grabber. It's another one of our more simple CPC bid management uh, methodology. So here what we're doing is we're looking for keywords that have had conversions over the selected date range of 30 days and that have a decent impression share loss. And so when there is impression share lost, the notion is we can probably reduce this number and get more of the impression share by raising the bid. And because these keywords have had conversions, that may be a good thing to do. So uh, that's a very simple way that that works. And as always, you can open up your custom filters to, uh, to really hone in on the methodology that you want to run. And by the way, if you save a filter, if you create a filter and then save it as a team filter, Kind of a nice benefit of this is that when you build a custom account workout, and I'm not going to cover that today, but an account workout is basically a workflow that you can create where you string together a number of optimizations. In that workflow, you can specify the custom team filter that you've built. So rather than having to have the team every time come in here, open up the filters to uh, set whatever your agency or your company likes to do, that will uh, be the default setting for the optimization in that workflow in the workout. Okay, so uh, this is the other 
simple CPC bid setting tool. Now we have a much more sophisticated rule um, or system, and this is called the rule engine. So let me go to here. So uh, this is a beta tool. I'll be sending the link to everyone who's on the webinar so that you have access to it. Um, but the, uh, the bid rule engine is a simple rule engine. And so it can set bids for ad groups, keywords, or product groups. And by the way, product groups, that's going to be covered in much more detail next week in our shopping ad management webinar. Um, so today I'm going to focus on a keyword example. Um, also later this week, uh, actually later this week means tomorrow um, or tomorrow in the United States and Saturday in Australia. But uh, sometime on Saturday you will see the ability to not just run these uh, bid rules for each ad group or each keyword, but keywords or ad groups that have a certain label. So it'll give you a little bit more granularity. Uh, but so say that we wanted to do keyword level bidding. So what we have here is an if this, then that type of system. So what we do is we specify certain conditions. And if those conditions are met, what is the action we want to take? So let me step you through it so you can basically see how this works. And then I'll give you a better example of a great way to use this. So you could say, if my cost was greater than some amount, and additionally, maybe there was a second condition that I hadn't had any conversions. Uh, by the way, as I'm going to select a metric on this page, notice that I do have a couple of options. So I can actually say whether the metric I'm pulling is for a specific device or across all devices. What is my look back window on that metric? And what is the scope of that metric? So even though I'm doing keyword level bidding, I can actually ask for data from the parent ad group, the parent campaign, or the account that this keyword is in to make some decisions. So but let me keep it simple in this case. And let's just say that we're going to say we had more than $100 in cost and conversions were equal to zero. Okay, so this would be probably an indication of perhaps an expensive keyword and a keyword we want to do something with like reducing the bid. So then we click on the action. As far as the actions go, we can increase, decrease, or set the bid. So in a simple way, we would say decrease the bid by some percentage is what most people would do. And then you simply type in what that percentage should be. You can also put a min and a max, and the min and max can also be dynamic, so they can also be calculated. I'm just going to leave them at 1 and 10 for now. But now we have a very simple rule set up. We're also going to tell the system not to go on and process the next rule if this condition has been met. So here we go. So if the cost is greater than 100 and we have no conversions, then we're going to decrease the bids by 10%. Now we might want to do something else. We might want to say if my cost is greater than 200, I actually want to decrease my bids even more significantly. So if you follow along here, I've just copied that rule. And then I'm going to update a few values in it. So everything stays the same. But now we're saying if the cost is greater than 200, then I want to decrease my bids by a larger percentage, 20% in this case. So I save that. And boom, now we're done. Now, um, notice that you could get into a situation where if you have um, a keyword that spent $250 and no conversions, well, that's going to meet this first condition, and it's actually going to stop. So it would only decrease the bid by 10%, even though it really should have been decreased 20%. So the order of the rules is important, right? It costs $250. So we can actually drag and drop these rules around um, and just think about in what sequence they should fire because uh, it, does, it does matter, right? So, But it's a simple drag and drop to reorder the rules. Okay, And then from here, once you've built your rules, you can preview them live for your account. Um, and let's see if I've preloaded one. Yes, I've preloaded one. So um, if the, some of the keywords, in this case, met those conditions, you would get a list of those keywords here with the current maximum bids and the new maximum bids. So you can even open this up to see which campaigns have matching keywords and which of the rules that I generated have matching keywords. And then, of course, you can scope it down so you can unselect the box. Um, update it, and then in this case, of course, you see nothing matches anymore because there was only one rule that met the condition, but, uh, but there you go. So those are some ways to do this. Now, from this page, you can do an instant apply, so it becomes much like a one-click optimization that you have in AdWord and in Optimizer, and if you want to fully automate it, you can do it through this link here. So uh, if you want to do that right away, just let us know. We're still testing it uh, just to make sure it's absolutely working perfectly, um, but it's basically built on top of scripting methodology, so AdWords scripts. 
So we will give you a piece of script code to install in your account. And then, uh, as you know, AdWords scripts, you can schedule this to be run automatically as frequently as once per hour. So, uh, so that's how all of that works. Now, I did promise I was going to show you a more interesting rule. So the rule that I've built here, I'll explain to you. So this is a um, kind of a thing that you would not be able to do easily inside of AdWords. And what I'm doing is I'm finding quote unquote expensive keywords. Now, what is an expensive keyword? What does that mean? Um, an expensive keyword that's a brand keyword is obviously different from a non-brand expensive keyword. So I am considering each keyword in the context of its campaign. And let me show you how I did that. So here, my rule says if clicks are greater than two times the clicks divided by conversions. Um, so that in and of itself doesn't make a lot of sense, but if I click on this, you'll notice that on the left side, I'm asking for the keyword. So look at the clicks for the keyword. And on the right-hand side, we compare that to the clicks divided by conversions at the campaign level. So what we're asking here is, how many clicks do I typically need to acquire one conversion? That's clicks divided by conversions. If I multiply that by two, I'm basically saying, find me my keywords that have had more than two times the normal number of clicks before which I should have expected at least one conversion. And so by mixing and matching the, uh, the entities, campaigns, and keywords, I'm actually able to do something pretty interesting in this case. So this is looking at keywords that have no conversions. Um, the other rule that I have is when a keyword does have conversions. Here now I'm looking at what is the actual cost per acquisition for the keyword. And on the right-hand side, I compare it to the typical cost per conversion within that campaign. So if a keyword is more than twice as expensive as the average converting keyword in that campaign, then it will also be considered expensive and will also decrease the bid. And so uh, this is uh, some, somewhat more sophisticated than what would be possible to do in AdWords. And because you can build it here as a rule, now it's, it's very nice because every week I can come back to this, I can literally hit the preview button, and I can treat it as a one-click optimization. So something that would have been a lot of calculation in the past now becomes a matter of uh, you know clicking two or three buttons, waiting 30 seconds, seeing the results, and then applying them to my account. And once I'm really happy that this is exactly what I want to do on a repetitive basis, I can literally automate it to happen by itself, say every Monday at six o'clock in the morning. So this is the, the rule engine. Um, any questions from anyone about anything I've shown so far? If you do have questions, um, please do put them in the questions field or in the chat field. Okay, so I see a couple of questions, so let me um, go ahead here. So. Um, the question is, what if a suggested bid is 2 and we set that bid to 30? Mm. I'm not sure I understand that question, so yeah, if you could elaborate on that question maybe the, to help me understand. So basically in this rule engine, we, we, we calculate the bid based on whatever you set, and then this is also what's going to be pushed into the system, obviously. And, and sorry, maybe the question was about a previous thing I showed because I, I missed your question. So if you could uh, let me know. And then Justin's asking, when you set these auto rules, will you receive an email notification that a change has been made? Uh, no, Justin, currently it does not send you an email. It does keep track of every change that's suggested as well as made in a Google spreadsheet and sending you an email notification that's on our to-do list to add to the system. Um, in fact, we have some changes launching, uh, again, as our big update tomorrow. And within that update, you're going to be able to do stuff not just like bidding, but also pausing and enabling entities. And then uh, sending out an email that's probably going to be in our next wave of feature updates for this. So but that's definitely a good suggestion. OK, so that's. Uh, CPC bids. Let me show you a couple of things now that we can do as far as bid adjustment. So that's that secondary level of bidding that you now have to do in AdWords. So it's not just about the CPC bid, but it's also about the adjustments that you set. So some of you may have played already with our geo bid adjustment tool. Uh, well, as of last week, that's now the geo and device bid adjustment tool. Uh, so you would open that up, and instead of looking at geographic locations, you can now say, find me device level information. So let me reload this page. 
Okay, so what we do here is we show you at the top line what are the different devices and the performance, and this is across the whole account, but we could also scope it down to a subset of the account and change the date range, etc. Okay, so that tells us something interesting. So we can see that five campaigns have accrued traffic on desktop, and these happen to be those campaigns. So we can see the top level data, but we can also get more granular. And then as we click on this, we'll even see the individual ad groups. Uh, of course, we show the ad groups because you can set device level bid adjustments all the way down to the ad group level. So the way that you would do the bid adjustments now is you, you might look at this and say, uh, we have a $20 cost per acquisition goal. So in this case, um, it's almost twice that. So maybe we need to reduce this by about 50%. So you could literally type on this to change the bids. Um, the, we do have a faster way to do this, and that's through the setting bid methodology. So here you can choose to target an ROAS, target a cost per acquisition, or have a target cost per click. So let me do cost per conversion. And let me once again say that we want to hit something of about $20 CPA, and I'm okay bidding as low and as high as the bid adjustments currently allow me. So once we update this, you will note for each for each of these, the, uh, the correct bid adjustments. But um, the astute advertiser notice, well, okay, based on one conversion data point, we're going to reduce our bids by 45%. That's pretty aggressive, right? That may be a little bit too much. So what you can do is you can open up your filters. So every tool that we have has filters that you can set custom uh, based on what your needs are. So you could say, I really don't want to make any change unless we have at least three conversions. You can apply that filter and close this out. And now you see the only entities that we have left are those that have at least that many conversions, so uh, more than three. So, um, so that's one way to look at it. And, and finally, what about those entities that didn't have enough data? What if we still wanted to set a bid for those? So um, we can actually go ahead and okay, we update this and we change this. So now we're going to do inheritance of the bid modifier. Um, and let's set this back to 20. Okay, so, so there we go. So now in uh, this case here, this, uh, this campaign and this campaign don't, didn't have enough data, right? They didn't have the three or four conversions that we needed. However, we've taken the bid adjustment, which is negative 49, which actually comes from that aggregate level across everything that's in this calculation. So, uh, so that's a great way to quickly set all of your device bid modifiers. And then for those of you who haven't tried doing this at the geo level, let me show you roughly how that works. It's the same idea behind it. And now instead of showing you devices, we'll show you the different countries. And we can go all the way down to the zip code postal code, and, and that, of course, depends on the country you're in and what Google supports, uh, but we support as granular as Google does. And so for within Australia, for example, we see we have two campaigns running. These are the stats behind it. And uh, once again, we could say, let's set the cost, let's set the CPC bids based on some target that we have, um, and it'd be the exact same thing. And now you can do this once for country, and you could do it for each level of specificity, of course, because Google will just take the most specific bid adjustment. And if there is no bid adjustment for a very specific region, it'll just look up to the city level, to the region level, and eventually to the country level. So um, let's see, questions here? Yeah, okay, so the, the question before about the $2 versus $30. So if the optimizer suggests a $2 bid and we set a bid to 30, so much higher, does that make us one of the top ad guys? Um, and yeah, so if you really wanted to bid for a certain position to be the top advertiser, I think the rule engine is quite nice because in the rule engine, you could certainly build a rule that's position-based. Um, so let me go back to the rule engine here and give you a quick example. So the condition that you would set up in here is not so much focused on cost in this case, but it would be much more focused on, av uh, sorry, not average CPC, but average position. Here we go. So say that your average position was too big a number, right, which means you're too far down the page. So say that it was greater than two. In that case, you might say, well, let's increase the bids until we hit an average position that's much closer to one. 
Um, so, but that will also then, can, by having a secondary rule, which is stop increasing our bid if we're already close to the one position, the number one position, that means you're not going to keep blindly bidding up and up and up above the amount that's really necessary to gain that first position. So, I uh, hope that helps. Um, we don't have competitive analysis data, so we're, we're not going to be covering that in, uh, in this session. So, um, so let's talk about uh, budgets. No, actually, let's have one more bid adjustment that I forgot. So this is the hour of the week bid adjustments. So when it comes to bid adjustments, hour of the week is obviously uh, one of the ones that you can do. We have a slightly different tool for this. Um, and I want to show you the brand new version that's also going to be coming out with this next release. Um, but one common piece of feedback we had about uh, the our week better was that people wanted to have custom ad schedules. So now we will be supporting that. So the basic methodology remains much the same. We load up the data for the campaigns that you've selected, and we show you the two metrics that you've chosen. So for example, you could look at conversion rate and compare that to the impression share. Um, okay, so we see we have some spikes in conversion rate, and the impression share kind of dips here, and it was mostly steady. Here on this chart, we show you the bid adjustments. And so you can actually grab these lines and you can move them up or down to change your bid adjustments. Now, the thing that's new is editing time slots. So if you didn't want to just use the four-hour time slots that Optimizer starts you off with by default, you can remove them by just collapsing them. You can drag them to a new location you can grab the edge and make it bigger or smaller. And then you will notice too, as I make these changes, the chart here at the top, the lines become either gray or blue, depending on whether your ads will be active in that time range. Um, and now you'll see this is Sunday, 8.45 a.m. until 11 a.m., which corresponds exactly with what's on here. So you can change uh, the day parts that you're going to be deploying, and then you can still use this chart here to set the actual bid adjustments either up or down. The other thing that's new that I'll show you is imitating the metric. So we've had the capability to imitate a metric, which is basically saying whatever curve we see on the line at the top, we want to replicate that in our bid adjustments. So we might want to do something like bid higher when we have a good conversion rate throughout the week. So uh, by default, we start off really conservative, so let's make it more aggressive. So now you see we have three bid adjustments, bid increases that we would be doing throughout the week based on the data. But what if you didn't want to do it if the number of conversions was too low? So we're going to say only imitate the conversion rate when the conversions are greater than some number. Okay, and so that's going to then update um, to, to give us um, a more statistically significant way of changing the bids. So, uh, so that's something else you can try out. So um, let's see, any more questions? And somebody, uh, so you really want competitive analysis. So, uh, yeah, again, this this is more of a webinar on bid and budget management. Um, we just don't have a competitor analysis tool. Um, and we, we don't actually know what their bids are, but that's that's a separate discussion. So if you want to have that discussion, just shoot me an email and we'll uh, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one call about that. Um, and I know it's a, it's a popular request. It's just not something we do. So um, the final thing I wanted to show you was what we can do as far as budgets. So when it comes to budgets, we have a couple of tools. We have a data insight for uh, projecting out what your spend will be. Sorry, that was the wrong one, spend projection. Okay, so the, uh, the point of this tool is to help you predict how much you will have spent by a certain date in the future. So in uh, most cases, that's looking at the end of the month, but uh, of anywhere on this curve, you can also see for different dates how much we think you will have spent. And so that's based on the linear regression. So the variance that you see is based on the fact that um, there has been some fluctuation in daily spent. And if you wanted to see what that fluctuation was, you can open up this other view of the data. But, uh, but say that we wanted to spend $2,000. Well, here it tells you we've already spent 11.5% of that for the month. But that's actually not very useful. What's more useful is how are we pacing towards this based on how much of the month is already gone. So this tells me we're going to hit about 76.5% of 
by the end of the month, so we need to find a way to spend 25% more money. So to find those budget suggestions, we can come to this tab. It tells us we've been spending about $52 a day. We really should be spending about $68 a day. And so we can click on this button to go and set some new budgets. You can also find this tool directly under the one-click optimization for budgets. Now, when this loads up, uh, it shows you a couple of interesting things. By default, uh, these yellow highlighted rows, these indicate that there's an opportunity. So there's impression share lost due to budget. So here we could spend more and potentially get some more traffic through it. So if we really wanted to spend the additional $6 needed to get to where we need to be, uh, this one tells me my budget is currently about 20 bucks. We could spend as much as 25, so let me put in a budget of 26. And so you see that we're going to be increasing the average daily spend on this by a few dollars. And it decreases this number by how much I still need to increase across some other campaigns. Now notice that all of these lines here, they don't represent campaigns, but they represent budgets. And in some cases, the budget and the campaign are the same thing. But in the case of this one, the bubble that shows up on the left shows you this is a shared budget and it's associated to a number of campaigns. So uh, the other thing then that people might want to do is decrease budgets in some cases. So easy way to do that is open up some columns that tell you about how effective some of these, some of these are. So let's find the highest cost per acquisition campaign. So this one is performing at $82. So maybe we actually want to decrease this budget and then we'll see this is gonna net us a $7.70 decrease. So we're now far behind what we need to do to spend $2,000. Uh, but then we could take that budget we just reduced and try to increase it somewhere else. Um, and of course, this is a one-click optimization. So once you click the button to apply the changes to your account, that is going to be uh, done in real time. Let's see questions here. So. Uh, uh, having a little bit of a, a back and forth on that uh, whole competitive thing. So uh, you should also include a feature for estimates for campaign. Uh, yeah, what do you mean by estimates for campaigns? So like when we put a list of keywords, so we should have estimated clicks and conversions with estimated cost. So yeah, actually that is something that we have thought about um, on this specific page. So as you can see for this specific example, there's not a huge opportunity to increase the budgets um, because the impression share loss due to budget is not tremendous, but that doesn't mean there isn't impression share lost due to rank. And so adding an additional set of columns like you're suggesting, that shows us what would be that opportunity if we just did an across the board 5% increase of all the bids within this campaign. Um, that is something we have thought about. And then also, of course, being smart and maybe allocating that additional bid to the most effective keywords, but helping you do that in such a way that we, we actually get you to the amount of spend you were trying to hit. Um, so I got two final things to show you. Um, so these are going to be the enhanced scripts. So enhanced scripts, these are based on AdWords scripting technology. And these can be run automatically once per hour, once per day. And so these are ideal solutions, we think, for helping you automate some of the really tedious, uh, monotonous tasks, like making sure you haven't spent too much budget. Now, knowing that you haven't spent too much budget is, is really not that complicated, but AdWords does actually make it more complicated than it should be because AdWords has campaign level daily budgets. Now, you and most of your clients probably think about account level monthly budgets. So it's slightly different, so we have to do a translation almost. So with this script, what you can do is you can tell us what is your maximum budget amount. So let's say it was $2,000. And you can also tell us this should be an account level budget, not just a campaign level budget. And it should not be daily, but it should be monthly or one of these other options. And if we spend more than $2,000 for the whole account over the period of a month, let's go and automatically pause everything that's active. So let's uh, pause that account until we're ready to resume it uh, at the start of the next budget period, which we can also automatically do for you based on the label that we'll be adding to those paused campaigns. You can even run this on subsets of the account. So um, if you wanted to do something like run a keyword level budget, you could run a budget that's only for keywords that have a certain label attached to them. Now, if your budget is truly $2,000, you should probably put your spend a little bit less than that because remember, this only runs once per hour. So there is a potential that for about one hour, 
this account would be spending money that goes above your limit before it actually catches it and starts pausing it. So uh, this is for preventing overspending. Let me go back to the questions real quick here. Uh, why doesn't the spend projection show conversion and other revenue projections based on past data? Um, yeah, so I like that suggestion. Um, that's something that I'll think about a bit more and see if we can add it. Um, yeah, that seems to make sense. Price shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, all right, optimized budget is a nice feature. Thank you very much. Um, cool, so let me show you the final script that we have. So just showed you the one that makes sure you don't spend too much, but we also have a script that makes sure you spend enough because uh, clients and stakeholders, they get almost just as angry for you not spending the full budget. Um, and of course, if you're charging a percentage of spend, that's bad for your bottom line as well. So it's a script called Reach Target Monthly Spend. Now, what this script will do is it will take your inputs for uh, budgets, uh, which could either be based on the campaign or shared budgets. And if it's a shared budget, you just click that button right there. But uh, you tell us for each of these budgets, what is it you're trying to spend over the course of a month? And how would you like us to allocate that money on a daily basis? So a very simple example, say that we have $1,000 left to spend, and we have 10 days left in the, in the, in, in the month. So 1,000 divided by 10, $100, that is the budget we should be setting on a daily basis. So that's an example of even distribution. So this script will automatically do that calculation once per day and update the daily budget with the correct value. Now, we decided to make this a little bit more sophisticated, so we have what we call the distribution of evenly with increases for high potential days of the week. And the example here is it actually matters quite a bit what days of the week are left when there's less than five, uh, seven days left. Okay, so if you have five days left and $500, it makes a pretty big difference if those five days are Monday through Friday or Wednesday through Sunday. Because for most of us, if our accounts are fairly typical, we spend more money on a Monday than on a Saturday. That's just because more people are searching on Mondays and clicking on ads. So, uh, so knowing that is pretty important. So what we do in this case is we say, well, 500 divided by five, so we should at least have a $100 budget but let's also take a look at what we typically spend on this given day of the week. And if that seems to be a high potential day of the week, we might actually bump it up to a significantly higher number. So we might say put a $140 budget on that Wednesday because we know that by Sunday, we're really not going to have that much potential to spend. Even if we try to spend $100, there may just not be enough people clicking on that day to get there. Um, so this is a better way to help you reach your goals. So, uh, and all of these, the, the, the scripts, they do send notifications. So Justin, I know you were asking for email notifications um, on the bid rule engine. That one doesn't have it yet, but all of these scripts, they will actually send you a notification about what happens. And most of these scripts have advanced settings too. So here you can tell us when we calculate the uh, day of week patterns, how many weeks of data should we use. If you have a situation where if you don't spend the full budget last month, if that needs to be carried over, we can automatically handle that for you. Um, and then we can also do some debugging, so this is more technical information. But uh, once you set this up, save these settings, you will download a piece of script code. I highly recommend that you eventually install it at the MCC account level. Uh, initially, I like to test the code by putting it into the, uh, the AdWords script section of my AdWords account for a single account. It's just a little bit easier to understand what it's going to do when I look at it for a single account. But once you have it up and running, you know what it's doing, just put it at the MCC account level. And then it's nice because now I can just literally switch between different accounts here and set up different settings. And because I've already installed the script at the MCC level, I don't have to do anything other than create a new batch of settings and it'll just pick that up from Optimizer.